very, very long time. In fact, this is on original lands of John C. Lee that I was talking about earlier, who is the patriarch of the Lee family. He is the individual who was born in 1817 in South Carolina. That's his grave there. And he, these are stones that were buried under the soil a few years ago that I dug up and was pleased to find because they have information that told us about their dates of death, etc. He died in 1878. Remember, he was the one that had four, I'm sorry, 700 acres of land. And he bought some of that land through the James Young. James Young was a white man who was the revolutionary uh, soldier who fought in the Confederate Army. So John C. Lee uh, was sold into slavery in Bullock County. He was born in 1817. And he married this lady, Liddy Johnson. She was a Johnson. And she uh, was born in 1830. And they had several children, and most of their children are buried here, some of them in unmarked graves. And we are working, in fact, Mr. Harville, who is from the Bullock County Historical Society, made a suggestion that we could actually get some folk from the Bullock County Historical Society that they can actually have technology where you can find graves. And so I think I'm going to take that up on that, but I want to let you know that this is where it all began. And when they died, they were able to be buried on their own farm. So we want you today to, particularly because we have here at least uh, 14 individuals buried in this cemetery who was born during the era of slavery. Lord have mercy. Can you think about the toil, working in the hot sun, pulling those heavy cotton sacks? Now remember when Eli Whitney came to the Nathaniel Green Plantation near Savannah, Georgia, and invented the cotton gin in 1793, that totally changed the whole manufacturing system in Georgia, which had an impact here in Bullock County, Georgia. Cotton became king until the 1920s when the bull weaver came up from Mexico and said, oh no, I'm the king. I will show you and wiped out a lot of the cotton industry. And that is when in this area, tobacco and peanuts and other crops became major. Now I lived during the era of cotton. I was hoping that the bull weaver would come back again. When I started <laughs> And I used to spend many days in the cotton fields pulling those heavy sacks. But we are thankful for John C. Lee. Now, I don't know exactly where, but somewhere in this area, the cowboy I talked about, who is the son of Cow Jack and Liddy Johnson Lee, is buried somewhere in here. So I'm hoping that we can figure out. He was the one that had two wives. We've lost both of their graves. One was Molly. They were Youngs because they were slaves of the white man, James Young, up on the place at Fletch. So Molly Young and Charlotte Young married, uh, both married Cal Jack Lee. Now, uh, Molly died early, around 1873. And so he then uh, had his sister, they both were living in the same house, uh, then had all of the rest of the Lee children by Charlotte Lee, okay? Now, in this area, Ebenezer Lee's family is over there where that big tree is there. And if you look back that way, uh, you will see the uh, Ebenezer Lee family. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do now is start, uh, I wanted to start here because these are the patriarch and matriarch of the whole family. Then we'll start in that corner there and just kind of work ourselves around, okay? Now, before we move, these are the two individuals I was talking about, July Butts and Amy Butts, buried here in the Lee Cemetery, died in 1905. This is July Butts. He was the one 
as part of the Back to Africa movement, born in Hancock County, sold all of his possessions, all of them, because he wanted to go to Liberia, West Africa. And now the trigger behind all of this, the United States Supreme Court in the 1870 overturned the Civil Rights Act of 1875. And so that was a shock to a lot of people because the Civil Rights Act during Reconstruction was supposed to protect African Americans where they can go into buildings and ride trains and all those other kind of things. But they made that law unconstitutional. So there was a Bishop Turner who was sent down by Abraham Lincoln who was in the uh, Methodist AME church who started a lot of churches around the Macon, Georgia area and July Butts came under the influence of this Bishop Turner who was very influential in this Back to Africa movement. And I told you earlier, they sold all their possessions, moved to Savannah, Georgia. I've traced them there, found where they were living. And his mother, uh, who was born in 1810, Mrs. Uh, Senior Butts, I'm not 100% sure of her first day right now, died there. because She was going to go to Africa too. So they put her in Largo. Largo is a fam famous cemetery for African Americans in Savannah, Georgia. They buried her there and then came up to Blitch. That's that area around where James Young had owned all this land. And so in 1905, he was going to one of the churches in this area. It's going to either be St. Mary's, it's going to either be Brown Chapel, or it's going to be Free Chapel because those are the black churches in the area. I don't know which one, but the newspaper of, in Statesboro, Georgia in 1905 said he was coming from a church service, going to go have dinner, and suddenly fell dead. And he's mentioned in the paper because he was a prominent African American at that time. And so here lies him in the Lee Cemetery. Now, here's why, and I don't know why, they both died the same year. He's the same year, July and his wife. And remember, I told you they had the children, the Butts, Amy Butts, Corrine Butts, Maddie Butts, all married into folk in this area. Okay, Maddie married uh, Elder Washington Hodges' son, Meshach. Now, remember that name, Meshach, because he was a black census taker. There's a whole story about Meshach because there were a lot of people, a lot of the whites were upset that this black man educated was a census taker. So they children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren of Alex Lee. Alex Lee is uh, one of the children of uh, Jack Lee, okay? And you have all of these children, grandchildren. You have David Boyd Lee, born 1895. But I want to talk about this lady, Hetty. Hetty Wallace, born in 1905 and lived to be 103 years old. I had the great, great opportunity of interviewing her on a number of occasions, and she gave me a lot of the history of the Lee Cemetery, St. Mary's Church, Free Chapel Church, and especially Brown Chapel Church, which was a black Methodist church, and we recently, Mr. Buck Lee and I, uh, he, he did the work and we kind of supported it, uh, found that cemetery, cleaned it off, and we're continuing to work on it. It's located about a mile back in the woods and it had all grown up with large cedar trees like this. And so those have been cleaned off. We're going to fence that in 
and she was able to tell me about that cemetery and many of the African Americans didn't know where it was. I found a white man named Robert Gray and he knew about it because he knew some folk that worked for him was buried and it was through him that I found it. So all of these individuals in this area, John Powell Lee over there, who is the brother of Hetty, all of these are related to uh, Ellick Lee. Now, Ellick Lee married two times. First, Lizzie Hall, related to the halls up around Willow Hill. James Hall, the pastor, I'm sorry, the deacon at Banks Creek Primitive Baptist Church, the one born in 1835 and died in 1895, uh, these were his first wife, Lizzie, was the daughter of James Hall, who married Susan Rich. And so she died early. Then Ellick Lee married Hetty Cox, and she's located over here. Now, Cal Jack Lee had other children, and one was Samuel Lee. This Samuel Lee died in 1923, but he moved to Savannah, Georgia. All of these folk in here are related to Samuel Lee. And most recently, when I moved back from Ohio, I learned about this lady here, Ordella Hampton. She just died in 2017. But I want to mention this lady, Eula Mae Hampton. When the Blitches left, the Lanes bought that big mansion up at Blitch, near where the store is. She worked in the house, and the White Lane fathered a child, this lady here, by this lady here. And she was a very, very fair-skinned people, and most of you who know the Lees are dark-skinned people, but she was fair-skinned. And this is one of those stories that has been lost. So when she became pregnant with a white man's child, they sent her away. They sent her away. You can't be born in this community. But these stories have a way of raising their heads. Let the truth speak. Let the truth speak. And let a lie forever hold its peace. So we honor these because we know the struggles. If you've got a young lady working there, it's not always consensual. Can't say what actually happened, but I just know how it does work. So these all are related to Sam Lee and his wife, Mamie. They both died in the 20s, but their families moved to Savannah, Georgia. But when they buried, they come back to the Lee Cemetery. That group of graves up there is related to that same family. Sam Lee, Samuel Lee. Call him Coot, Coot Lee, and his wife, Mamie. Okay, now let's go this way. And what I was just talking about, this is also part of those graves as well. All of this is related to Ellis Lee. I want to make mention to this grave here. And the reason I want to make mention of this grave, this grave, was we just dug this out this week and found out where George Lee was buried. Now, this is the George Lee, who is the slave man, who is the son of John C. Lee. And John C. Lee was called Boat Jack. I don't know why he was called Boat. I wondered if he worked in a boat in South Carolina before he came here, or did he come on the boat? I don't know what, but he's called Boat Jack. But we just discovered his grave. He married a Seely. Guess what she was? A young. <laughs> so there's a lot of youngs in this area here. Want to call attention to Stevens, Dolly, and Maggie Lee. Now, anybody know anything about Stephen, Dolly, and Maggie Lee? Yes. Any of they people here? If they are, raise their hand. <laughs> All right. So this gentleman lived on the Lee Plantation long time ago when someone would die before they had embalming. Mm. They would bring the body to Stephen Dahl Lee's house and Maggie Lee's house, and they would have a wake all night long. And the following day, they would bring them to this Lee Cemetery and bury them. 
And one month later, they would then have the funeral service. This is prior to the era of embalming. And Cousin Hetty Lee Wallace told me a lot about those stories because her own father, Alex Lee, was buried in such fashion. And one month later, they had the funeral at the Free Chapel Church. They had back then something called graveside services. You come to the grave, you have a ceremonial service, and you bury the person. Now, at that time, they would put them in wooden boxes. They wanted to protect them against animals digging into the grave. Hodge, and sometimes the name is Hodges. Uh, she first married a Hodges, then she married Green Hagens, then she married Thomas Hodges, so she married three times. She buried her husband. <laughs> All three of them. <laughs> All three of them. They say she was a tough lady. That's what I hear the folks say. Oh. That's what the folks say. That's what the people say. <laughs> These over here are the Scots. Now, the Scots were related to uh, Hetty Cox and the Scots. They were all related. And that grave over there, I haven't figured out who it is. Here is more leaves in this direction. The Perkins, James Lee, uh, Julia Lee, and R.L. Lee. She died tragically in a car accident. This is Miss Aretha who's a member of St. Mary's Church. These are her parents, Miss Aretha Perkins. There is Willie Lee who was in the military. Mm -hmm. Now this section here is all related to Jesse Lee. All of this line here. Jesse Lee was the son of John C. Lee, the patriarch, and he married Annie Hall. Do you recall me talking about Lizzie Hall? This is her sister, Annie who married Jesse Lee, and they had several children, uh, cousin Eddie Ro Lee, cousin Gertrude Lee, who married a Melvin at one time, then later married Farman Jones. Uh, this is all their lineage. Now, tragically, cousin Gertrude uh, Lee, who married a Melvin, who was later a Jones, had only two sons. And these are children of Stephen Dawley, who I told you had the farm down there. So these 
I remember her very well uh, and her sister buried over at Old Bethel. These are all children of Eddie Rowe Lee, cousin Viola Lee. Remember cousin Gertrude? These are cousin Jesse Lee's people. Eddie Rowe Lee, Viola Lee, and all these are their children. And this section over here, Professor Aaron Pope. Well, these are children of Molly Lee and Abram Lee. Harrison Lee had a brother named Fairbrown Lee, married Nellie Wallace. Okay, and these families originated out of South Carolina. Now, I want to call attention. This is Fairbrown Lee here who is a brother of uh, Harrison Lee. So they buried in the line. This is Fairbairn Lee. Want to call attention to the person Uh, would be uh, John uh, Cal Jack Lee's uh, lineage because his his daughter was Violet Lee. Okay. Now this are the Lesters in here. All of these are the Lesters. Every last one of these graves, and they all originate out of Lucy Lee. Lucy Lee married Roger Lester. Roger Lester came out of South Carolina. And everybody in here, in this circle, is either a child or a girl.
here and want to thank Mr. Ernest Buck Lee has been the caretaker, his grandmother, Celie Lee, and Pete Slater, grandfather, left in his watch to keep an eye on this very cemetery. And I want to tell you, Mr. Lee, don't you cut down these cedar trees. It's not a good idea.